API security, top seven best practices. And this is really important because API powers up all those different internet services that we're using across the internet. But before we jump right in, the first question that we want to ask is, what exactly is API? So API stands for Application Programming Interface. And this is literally how the internet services or software talk to one another. And you can be using different languages like Python, Java, and so on. And they could communicate with one another because of a standardized interface. So for example, if you're going over into your mobile banking app and you're checking your account balance, what's happening behind the scene is an application programming interface call that allows you to communicate with those services and then getting those information back. Likewise, whatever you're using right now across the internet, they're all powered by API. So in this case, as a user on the left side, you're accessing into the API, it could be your enterprise application, could be even your connected car. In that case, this allows you to access different services like say, ride hailing services, being able to remotely control your car, being able to use all these different services. And what's happening right now is there is a problem. The problem is that not only you can access all these different APIs, but so can Mr. Hacker Loy. And what we want to do now is to inspect and block out all this unauthorized activities like volumetric access, being able to masquerade some other users, being able to access other different services that I'm not supposed to. And we want to monitor all of this and block out the bad actors. So with that, if you see over here, this is the top seven, and we are going to dive deep into each of them. And the very first one is going to be on authentication. So authentication is basically proving who you say you are. So in this case, your best friend forever, Mr. Script Kitty Loy, is going to access over into a mobile application. And through an API, he wants to be, because a naughty boy, masquerade as his idol, Mr. Hacker Loy, and see, hey, how much money does Mr. Hacker Loy have in his bank account? So as a result of that, Mr. Script Kitty Loy does not have, for example, Mr. Hacker Loy's password nor his access key. In that case, the API will be able to block out this request that is masquerading as another user. So this is typically set up, all right, true application business logic to verify the user. Next up is authorization. So authorization is now that I have proof who I see I am, possibly true password, access keys, and so on. So in this situation, your best friend forever, Script Kitty Loy, is now once again accessing over into a mobile application. However, as a user ID 100, he wants to try assessing another user's profile. He wants to see if he can get the account statement of another user ID. So in this situation, we have another user ID of 101. So the application has to have the identity and access management policy to say, okay, you are only allowed to access your own account information and not someone else's. Next up, we're rate limit. So rate limit is really interesting because this is the part where if you see here on the left side, we have the bad actor, all right, that is going to possibly himself or from the robots or bots that has been controlled and taken over, they're going to access over into the application programming interface to flood it, to flood it with so much requests that the API can no longer respond to genuine users requests. And what we want to do here is to ensure that all application programming interfaces are fronted by a firewall. So the firewall will be able to block out all these denial of service attacks, all these volumetric accesses, or even a coordinated attack using multiple compromised devices and IP addresses to target the API. And with that, genuine users will then be able to continue access into the application programming interface services. Next, we have input validation. Input validation is huge. So this is the part where we're seeing a lot of different kind of common vulnerability exposure, SQL injection, and so on. So going back to the earlier architecture, what's happening behind the API services is you're likely going to have databases, you have file service, you have your workloads that are running, and the API is connecting over into all these different services. And what the hacker is trying to do here is to place in common attack methods like structured query language injection, cross-site scripting with their own JavaScript, or even command injection for unauthorized access into the backend workloads. So firewall once again play a huge role by inspecting all these requests for malicious information 
and then be able to block out those type of bad payloads. So this is where the firewall would have either managed rules or custom rules that allow you to put in this type of protection. Next up, we have monitoring. So monitoring is a part where we're going back to the earlier architecture is as all of this is happening, you want a security monitoring system that is able to pick up all these events from your firewall, from your API gateways, from your databases, your file systems, your workloads, and all of this, and able to aggregate across and see, okay, if there is, for example, a SQL injection attack, was it blocked or did it actually went through into the database? Or if it was a volumetric access, did it shut down the services? Did it make the service unresponsive or was it blocked out? And with that, the security analyst and the security team will be better able to respond to different types of cyber attacks against your API. Next up that is growing is going to be on replay attack. So this is the part where Mr. Script Kitty Loy has now authenticated and has authorization to run, say, get, post, put, delete. And what is going to happen now is Mr. Script Kitty Loy is going to use the authentication or the authorization cookies and then place them over possibly into other devices or using the same device that he has and then accessing over into the API again to replay it. So, for example, if he made a $100 all right, credit over into his account. Can he replay that another hundred times and make himself a millionaire? Next up, we have API discovery. So this is the part where in an enterprise, in an application, there are going to be numerous application programming interfaces. And what the hacker is doing here is that it's going to target over into say bank.com slash API. And there are like, like put money, make transfer, refund, get money, and all these different APIs. And there's going to be hundreds or even thousands of them that are combined together to make an application. So what the hacker is doing here right now is that he's going to crawl over into all these different APIs and he may discover that there is a specific API that is not protected by a firewall. It somehow got through that and he could directly gain access into the origin and start hammering it with all these different type of malicious requests and then giving them unauthorized access over into the API service. So with that, we have gone through the top seven security best practices for API security. Implement it. Let me know how it goes. And if you like this type of tutorial, subscribe to the channel, turn on notification, and see you another time.